Hello. Welcome to the session two uh, for Aloha Stored Value card setup. So from our headers here, you have you see Aloha Stored Value card setup wizard is what I'm going to be covering. This is our demo website that I'm showing this on, so you do see a lot of card prefixes here. When you log into your website, your white box in here will be blank so that you can enter in your one or two card prefixes you may have for your Aloha Stored Value product. As you start creating your card prefixes, you'll see your name and your card prefixes entered in on your enterprise website. As you start creating them, you can edit them and obviously use the delete key. Uh, but I'm going to hit the add key so we can add your card prefix because that will be the first thing that you do. Once you see this come up, you'll see the name field and then you can enter in the name for your card. Give it just a minute here to come up. There it goes. All right, so for your card type, on the name, uh, whatever name you enter in here will appear on the POS guest check and the enterprise reports. So keep that in mind, whatever you type in that name field, your guest will see that and that will also appear on the enterprise reports. On the description, you do not have to enter anything in here. Let me back up on the name field. You see a required uh, red asterisk there, so you have to enter in some kind of name. The description field does not have a red asterisk, so technically, yes, you can leave it blank. If you were to type any words in here, it will not appear on the guest check and will not appear on the enterprise reports. So essentially, your description that you type in there will be for your eyes only on this card setup wizard only. Your card prefix is a five-digit card prefix that the card vendor gives to your company, specifically to your company. So uh, no one else uh, within your area has the same first five digits. What we're looking for you to enter into this card prefix box is the first five digits. Okay, so if you order 500 cards, all 500 of those cards will have and start with the same first five digits, and that's what you enter into this box. Down at the bottom, if you're not going to sell and redeem your stored value cards to all stores up front, you can create a specific replication group and put those stores in that replication group. So those specific locations will only sell and redeem those cards. Um, you might want to just consider leaving it at all stores because this particular option here, you cannot come back and change it. So if you start out using a replication group, you'll just have to update this replication group to have all stores in it if you want to down the road. If you leave it to all stores, just keep in mind that the software and buttons are not installed at the store level. The cards will not work anyway. So if you left it at all stores, um, that, again, is an option that you cannot come back and change. So for the card type, we're going to be talking about Aloha Stored Value Cards. You want to make sure that that piece is selected. That enables the next two tabs that we're going to discuss. The last two tabs deal with our other product that we have for it called Aloha Loyalty. You can use the same card prefix um, for both products. So if you have one card prefix out there and you would like your customers to just carry around one card for their e-card and Aloha Loyalty, then you can do that. Or you can have two different card prefixes for both products. Under the Aloha Stored Value Settings tab, our first box here is Card Purchase Value. You have two choices, to prompt for the card purchase value or the card, the, uh, card purchase value is set to X amount of dollars, which will say $20. So if you use this option here, essentially if a lady comes to your door and says she wants to put $16 on the card, you won't be able to do that because your cards are sold in $20 increments. Now, if you get a lot of moans and groans and your customers don't like that, then you can come back and change this particular box to prompt for a card purchase value. So that way those customers coming to the door that want to use 
16 or want to put $16 on their card, they can do so because you're prompting for the card purchase value. With either option, you have a choice to allow the customer to add value to the card. Now, this last flag here is just an option. You do not have to use it if you don't want to. But essentially, it allows your customers, when they get down to like 10 cents, for example, or zero dollars, the card doesn't have to be thrown away. It can just be uh, the customer can keep it, and they can add more value to it. All right. So for each card that you have, or each card prefix that you have, you have a choice of how you would like it to work. Do you want the card to be adjusted and not give cash back? So my example that I'll use for all three of these is I had a gift card for $100. I used my guest check was $50. So in this first option, I give the server my gift card. It's swiped. $50 is deducted from my card. So now I have $50 left. The card is given back to me. Obviously, no cash is given to me. So I'm going to come back sooner than later because I know I have $50 more on my gift card. The second option, the same example, $100. However, in this scenario, give uh, the balance of the card back in cash. So $50 is redeemed on the guest check. But I'm given $50 back in cash. My gift card balance itself is zeroed out, and I have $50 cash in my pocket. So with option number two, I may not come back sooner than later because I have cash in my pocket now, and my gift card is zero. Option three, we'll call it a full redemption or use it or lose it. Do not adjust card balance or give the cash back. So again, in this scenario, um, the in my uh, example, the $100, it would benefit the customer to use the whole $100 on their first visit. The card balance is not adjusted, and I'm not giving cash back. So if I just use $50 on that visit, the gift card basically will be zeroed out. Okay, The card's not going to be adjusted to have $50 more on it, and I don't get cash back. So it's a use it or lose it kind of a card. Uh, most people use option number three here for charities and donations. Now, as I went through those options, if you like, a lot of people like the first one and the third one. Their their uh, main card, one, two, three, four, five, that they have will work as an adjust balance card. Don't give any cash back to the customers because you want them to come back sooner than later. Then they're going to order a second card prefix. Call it charities and donations card. And it would have a different card prefix, and you would flag this one as your charities and donations option. Okay, so you'll each each type of card that you want, you will need to have a separate card prefix for. Under the expiration date settings, you cannot expire. You can have no expiration date, or you can expire on or in certain amount of days. Now, you notice when I try to expire on or in a certain amount of days, I get this message that says, hey, you can't use the add value feature when you're trying to expire a card. So I'm going to say no. I don't want to disable it because I just wanted to show you what the flag that, that they're talking about is this one right here. Allow customer to add value to the card. So we have a business rule in place that uh, you know you don't want to expire your cards because if you had an expiration date on my card, a year from now, but uh, you know, kind of approaching the year end, and I went and put a hundred more dollars on my card, and it's going to expire in a month. And that's not really good, um, you know, and I wouldn't be very happy with that. So, with that particular example, this is why we put that business rule in place. So, if you if your company wants to use an expiration date, then you cannot use the add value feature. All right. So that way you can expire on or in a certain amount of days. 365 is the default, but you can change that. Okay. We have another flag here that's in place. You do not have to use it if you don't want to. I like to call it a grace period. Essentially, you're giving your customers X amount of days after their uh, exp expiration date to redeem their card. So in this example that I have here, I'm really giving my customer 93 days to redeem the rest of their money off their card. Okay, it expires in 90, but the POS system will accept it three days after the uh, the expired date of business. Okay. 
on your sale and redemption dates, it will default to the current date of business. Um, I do recommend that you have these dates the same. Uh, if I came in that morning and bought a gift card, took it back to work, gave it to my girlfriend, she decided to go out to dinner that night, you want to sell and redeem your cards on the same date of business. Okay. The next box is related to our MemberLink product. MemberLink is a separate product that allows your customers to log in through your consumer web page and view their stored value or their e-card balance, to view their uh, loyalty programs, um, update their member profile, etc. That's what MemberLink is used for. MemberLink is, again, a separate product, has its own training class, and these options are discussed in that training class. It's basically just a, giving you extra layer of security of logging in by using an ePIN validation. Um, that's kind of in a nutshell what those flags are right there. The last box that you see down here is ACH Settings. It stands for Automated Clearinghouse. Essentially what we've done is partnered with RBS Link um, that will you know, coordinate with you and set up your bank account and routing numbers, etc. They, the, being RBS Link, gives Radiant Systems group your group ID um, that's entered into this box, a terminal ID, a merchant ID, and those things are entered in as well. And um, that's where, you know, kind of how the uh, the transactions work there. ACH is a funds transfers pool, so essentially it's used for franchisees mostly. So if you have a franchisee environment, you might want to look into using a ACH, Automated Clearinghouse. Okay. Now the last tab that we're going to talk about is Aloha Stored Value Service Charge. This tab is not checked by default. If I check it here, you see the message comes up just letting you know that service charges are not legal in all states. So you might want to check with your Better Business Bureau or your state laws to see if you can use service charges. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes and enable that and just kind of go through the scenario um, of entering in the information in case there is anyone that can and wants to use service charges. So in here, I can deduct a specific dollar amount, whatever you put in there, every day, week, month, or year. Okay? So I can deduct a dollar fifty every week from the card balance if the card has not been used for X amount of months or days or weeks or years. Okay? The card has not been used for one day. The card has not been used for six months. All right? So essentially, it's like a sentence here. You just read it. We're going to deduct $1.50 every week from the customer's card if they haven't used their card in six months. So now with this option, you have a particular another flag that you can set up. If it's not checked, basically it's what the sentence says. We're going to deduct $1.50 weekly if the card's not been used in six months. However, if the card is used in six months, I'm going to reset that service charge interval if the card has been used. So really, with that checked, essentially, if the customer continues to use their card every six months, they will always avoid that $1.50 weekly service charge. Okay? Or, if you didn't, you know, like the first option, if the card has not been used for X amount of day, weeks, months, or years, then you can just straight up say you're going to start deducting $1.50 every week, um, let's say six months after the card has been sold or you have, again, the day, weeks, months, or years. So that would just be a straight up, after the card's sold, you're going to start seeing a service charge. Put the date that you want the service charge to begin, at the beginning of the month or when you start using your store value cards. For reporting purposes, you tell us um, where do you want to apply the service charge to, a particular store, or, uh, or the, excuse me, the store where the most recent sale or add value had occurred, which could be any location, okay, or it could be a specific store that you have under site.